In this video, we're going to learn how to open a data set in R. So first of all, uh, think about where the data set is located on your computer. So here for me, notice you could just go to different folders and I'm going to, I know it's in this folder under data sets. So, all right, I'm there. Now here's the cool thing about this. Back in the day, uh, you needed to know which exact lines of code opened the data set for you but now it's a lot easier. So let's say I take this data set, star.dta. By the way, that .dta at the end, that's called an extension, and that tells you what kind of file it is. So any file ending in .dta is a stata data set. Anyone ending in .xlsx is an Excel, Microsoft Excel data set, and so on. So anyway, so once I click on this, on the star.dta, I can then import the data set over here. So no need to click on view file, that'll open up Stata, uh, but you click on the import data set. So again, instead of having to type in lines of code there, you can do import data set there. Also, by the way, while we're here, if you know you're gonna use a lot of uh, files from that folder, you could just click on more and set that to your working directory, set as working directory, then that way you know that you're always gonna Oh, when you, that, that's where you're going to open things to and save things to. So anyway, click on star, click on import data set. And so here's the cool thing. So a couple of cool things. One is it's giving me a preview of that data set. So uh, before we move any further, I just want to take a sec to talk a little bit about what is data? Like what exactly is a data set? Well, most of the time, a data set's going to have rows and columns. The rows, think of it, the best way to think about this, especially when you're starting, is to imagine that you are asking, a pe asking people a bunch of survey questions. So each row here represents a different person that you was in your survey. And each column here, race, birth year, class type, is a question that you ask them. So this first row over here is representing all of the answers that that person gave you. They, their race is one, and again, here you might have had a code where maybe one is white, two is black, so on. This is the year that they were born in, uh, and so on, right? This is their reading score, this is their math score, things like that. By the way, this star data set, this is from an experiment in the 90s about class size. So there were three types of classes, small, large, and large with a teaching assistant. And so this is the actual data set from that experiment. So you can see the, the exact test scores and you can even average the test scores, which we'll do later. But so in either case, this is the data set. It's got a bunch of people, a bunch of variables. Observations are the number of rows. Variables are the number of columns. And looking over here, you can even see on the bottom left here, oh yeah, it's a .dta file and whatnot. But most importantly, let's look at the code preview. This is what you would have had to type out if this import feature didn't exist, right? If, if we didn't do this, another way to import this data set, we can either just click import and then we're done. But just to really understand it, we can alternatively just do these lines of code. So just, just for illustration purposes, I'm gonna copy this. Uh, one other final thing here is notice, open data viewer. So that's after we load the data set, which we will shortly, you have an option to view it immediately or not. And so notice whether I click on this open view data or not, that's gonna turn this last row on or off, right? So if I, so that, that's all that's doing. So whether I include that or not is about whether it shows it to me. So I'm gonna cancel this for now and paste it here in my uh, R script. And just to, I, I, I would just wanna talk through a little bit what each of these lines is doing so that you properly understand what's going on. So first of all, the .dta files, the Stata dataset files, aren't naturally openable by R and that's why you need to load this library. You gotta install it once, but after that you don't need to, you just need to type in library haven and this haven library has this command, read underscore DTA. So here's the anatomy of this line then, right? So this is just you loading the library. Then this, notice this star, this doesn't have to be star by any means. This I could just call it cool data one, right? So this is the data set uh, that you know that I'm I'm choosing that name, and this is the assign 
assign uh, command, uh, which I could also replace that with equals, uh, sorry, same thing, equals assign, you know, does the same thing. Uh, and then this is the actual command that's going to read this guy. And then this guy in quotes here, this is the actual name of that data set. And again, you might, might have a star.dta file throughout your computer in multiple places, but remember, it's only reading it from the working directory. So that's why it's important that you know what your working directory is, and that way you're getting the correct version of that file. Often, you'll, often people will just name data sets like data set one, and you might have a bunch of data set ones from many different years uh, or semesters or classes. And so again, you've got to make sure your working directory is right, so you're opening the correct data set one. But again, here, this is a unique enough name it's, it's here in your working directory, but you can call it whatever. And just like we could say X, just like in the past we said X and then assign three, and then that made X have the value three, like over here. Just like that, what this is doing, the data set assign this, let's, happen, let's see what happens when we do this. But again, we gotta do library haven before that, so I'm gonna run both of those. And now, look over here. I now have the name of its cool data one. And again, I could have called this anything. I could have just called this Y. Let's see what happens. Now, oh, I have Y, cool data one. They're the same thing. They're basically the star data set. And over here on the top right, on the environment panel, you can see how many observations there are in that data set and how many variables there are in that data set. Uh, and finally, if you do view, if you wanted to do it, so notice one thing. If I do view star like it was originally, Oh, that's, you know, th there's an error, nothing found. Why? Well, because remember, when I did the manual, you know, the built-in sort of import data set thing, it like called it star for me, but then I went ahead and was fancy and changed its name to either cool data one or Y. So if I just view Y, then it works where now, ah, I can see the data set. So notice often what will happen is people will, you know, when they're first importing the data set, they'll see it and they'll be like, oh yeah, that's cool, I wanna peruse this thing. But then after they like load it, then they're like, oh, you know, how do I view it again? Well, you can always, you know, view it by doing view and then the name of that data set and view it that way. And notice there, then you can always, it, the tabs up here, you can always go back to your original R script. So you don't need to, you know, open it up every time. You can just go back and forth easily and have it open if you wanna keep viewing it. Uh, the final thing here is, what if, looking over here, what if you wanted to open a different type of data set? So instead of star.dta, that was a data, a stata data set. Let's look at this guy over here, .xlsx, that's an Excel file. So if I click on the BWC, whatever that data set is, click on import data. Uh, well now, again, I'm previewing this, but notice here, let's look at the code preview. It's library read Excel. So read Excel, that's a different, um, that's basically a different type of library. Not, it's not Haven like the other guy was. And it has a different command. Instead of read dot, you know, whatever that thing was, dot read DTA, this is now read underscore Excel, and it's going to open that Excel file. So again, it's a different library because it's a different file type. And similarly, there's another one, read er, as in read and then just the letter R, and that's for CSV files, which is comma separated values. But in either case, the good thing is you don't need to really memorize these. Whatever the file type is, just click import and then it'll tell you it here, right? So it'll just tell you. So I could just, I'm just gonna import these. Actually, one final thing here is often Excel files, the very top row of an Excel file might be just the, the names of variables, right? And that's the case here. So that's, it's cool. Again, it's telling you what that column's representing. This is the I, the I identification number for that person, right? Because each person has one. It's whether they're in the treatment group or not. Again, for a lot of these things, though, you have to uh, look at, you got to really understand your data set first. You got to know how the authors defined each variable. But notice, sometimes you might have an Excel file where the top row is actually not the variable names. It just like gets in, it's just column A, B, C, D, E, and it just gets into the numbers. They don't maybe have particular labels. And in that case, you wanna uncheck, uh, uncheck this mark. So first row as names, you wanna uncheck that. But obviously that's not our case here, so we wanna keep it checked. Uh, so that way the first row is treated like variable names. Either way, then I could just click import, and now it imports it.
So notice the other cool thing here is you could have we could have we have three data set files open. So you can uh, you basically are allowed to have multiple data sets open, and that allows for some cool things where you can draw on variables from from different ones at the same time without having to worry about saving and then opening up another one like you might have to for another program such as Stata, right? In Stata, you can only have one data set open at a time, so this is a really cool feature of R.